I took a long time to make this video, so I'm excited to pump it out. I took the time to test every Ford with a makeshift highway test, a handling test, and I also tested them in online racing across many tracks. I compared the total times across the tracks and in my tests. And I not only did this for every car, but I did this for every engine of every car to ensure that I'm presenting the absolute best version of the cars. It took just over two weeks to complete all of these tests and create this tier list. So please, right from the start of the video, drop a like to show some support for this hard work. Let's begin the list with my favorite S Plus Ford. Although the Ford Raptor, in my opinion, feels the absolute best and is the best handling car that I've used in S Plus so far, it actually is very bad for this class. And when I say it's my favorite, I don't mean it's my favorite in the way that it looks or the fact that it's a ute. It's just my favorite based on how it feels. It just handles really well. It has more than 1500 horsepower with the optimal setup, but unfortunately due to its enormous size, it's just not as powerful comparative to the other cars. It's just not as good on the straights. It's slow on the straights and it has a wide turning radius, but it does exactly what you expect it to do and it's really the easiest car to use. It feels really good to drive. Although it's tuned for maximum road potential, as expected, it still has good off-road potential, which is more than you can say for all the others. As much as I love it, it's much too weak on the straights to be a strong S Plus car. The Ford Focus is weak on acceleration and weak on top end power. However, it has a good turning radius and the second best cornering speed. However, its handling doesn't feel nice. It has a snap steering feel to it. When it transitions between grip and drift, it snaps from one to the other instead of a smooth transition. This snap steering sometimes snaps you right off your racing line into wars or in the wrong direction which can be very frustrating in saying that even cars with annoying handling mechanics if you use them for long enough you grow accustomed to them and learn to minimize the errors but if you're switching between cars and think to yourself hmm i feel like being unique and you know having a go at my ford focus which i haven't used for a while well unfortunately you're probably going to snap steer your way out of a few positions and realize it's not a good idea. So cars with these funky handling mechanics, use them with caution. I feel like you need to use them for a while before you can really use them effectively in races. The 1965 Ford Mustang has smooth transitions between grip and drift, but it has a wider turning radius than the Ford Focus and is slower in cornering. On straights, it also has a tendency to lose grip and drift, which is absolutely horrible on highways. It has average acceleration, but a comparatively good top speed. It's hard to be consistent with this car due to this drifty nature. And although it's hard to use and a weak choice for S+, I still like the car a lot. Maybe it will have more luck in other classes. The Crown Vic has a snappy handling mechanic like the Ford Focus, but it has a much wider turning radius and turns a lot slower. The car is boaty and in a similar way to the Mustang, it drifts at high speeds, which makes it hard to use. However, it has the highest top speed and can create some fun experiences on speed tracks. Don't get too excited though, regardless of this top end, it still isn't enough to compete with cars from other manufacturers, even on straight roads. Nonetheless, if they crash on a speed race, it's a great feeling to end up winning with the Crown Vic. The 1969 Mustang Boss struggles to make it up to 400 performance points, and in fact, the optimal build sits at a 396 score. Regardless of this, it is still a monster on the straights, getting the fastest overall time on my makeshift highway test. It is another snappy car, and actually, it's very hard to use. I don't like how it feels at all. I find that using the handbrake during races with this car to be very useful and more reliable than tapping to drift. It's really not a nice car to try and tame and control, but compared to the other Fords, it is good for speed races. The Mustang Fox body is the acceleration king of the Fords in S Plus class. The first basic engine has a low top speed, but amazing acceleration that cannot be overlooked. 
overall, regardless of this engine's lower top speed, I believe it to be the best engine choice for the car. With this engine, the car feels like it's made for the drag strip, but surprisingly, it corners pretty well compared to the other Fords. I'd say it feels better than average in the way that it handles. It has a little bit of snap steering, but nowhere near as much as the other cars. Overall, with as little bias as possible, I've ranked the cars in, in an order as you can see on screen, and I've ranked this as the second best Ford to use in S+. It's really not a favourite of mine, but it performed well and it seems to do a good job against the other Fords. Before we move on to the last few cars in the list, I just want to say thank you for watching this far. And if you are watching and listening and you're enjoying the content and want to help me out, please drop a goldfish in the comments. I really appreciate your support. Now, the only car from this list that you don't really feel special in would be the Ford GT. Now, what I mean by that is all the other cars, you don't really see them in S Plus class. But... The Ford GT, you see it all the time because it's the default loaner car that people use if they don't own an S Plus car. So it's quite common to see the Ford GT in S Plus races. Fully upgraded, its power on the straights is underwhelming compared to the others. Where it stands out, however, is its handling, its grippiness. It is one of two Fords that can be tuned to have 100% grip handling. And I'll say that I really don't like how this car feels with tap to drift, but it feels great with tap to drift turned off. It has the best cornering speeds of all the Fords, and with tap to drift off, it is easy to drive. It, beside the Raptor, is the most consistent and best to drive, but only with tap to drift off. I have a spreadsheet for every car comparing their engines, but I also have a master list which shows my best setups including engines, car parks and handling setups. Links to those are in the description, so if you want the builds and handling setups of the, the cars that I tune and that I make, they'll be in the description of this video and in the description of my future videos. The 2015 Mustang GT doesn't feel very good for S+. Its overall power isn't bad and its handling potential is okay, however, it just doesn't feel nice to drive. I can't even pinpoint what isn't nice about it, but it just doesn't feel right to me. There were times where I'd want to turn, but the car would feel very stubborn. It would feel stuck and like it was just bound and continuing on its trajectory regardless of my corner inputs. Like if I'm going around a light you know, left winding bend, and I try and turn to the right, the car's going to continue going towards the left, as if it's like a little bit on rails or something, and you can't change it. It's, it's very frustrating to use. Hard to, hard to explain, explain it. I, I found it difficult trying to tame this, especially at high speeds. I was just very uncomfortable with it. The 2019 convertible Mustang, on the other hand, feels nicer to drive. However, sometimes it will spin out. Most of the handling issues for the other cars have been a snap steering issue. However, this car and the 2015 Mustang GT are quite unique. The problem for this car is that it doesn't want to back out of drifts and it will continue drifting or turning even without controller input or even with controller input telling you to go the opposite way. I didn't really notice this issue until after I finished tuning the car, so maybe if we turn traction control on, this problem would be fixed. Other than this, it handles quite nicely and I've found it to be the third fastest Ford around bends. It's right in the middle of the pack for acceleration and it has the third highest top speed. 